Hello, friends and family of Norway Grove. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jonna Georgia, and I am a deaconess, and it is my honor to be leading us through worship today as we uh, work through the scripture of Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, a great ruler over heaven and earth. With sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin, which divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your reaction. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God, our Maker, does provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield, wheat and tares together sown, unto joy or sorrows grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we pull some grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From his field shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give his angels charge at last in the fire the tares to cast but the fruitful ears to store in his garner evermore let us pray O god of power and might your son shows us the way of service and in him we inherit the riches of your grace Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Give us grace to serve him wisely and faithfully that the world may see his glorious inheritance among the saints and recognize the freedom of joyful obedience in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. 
I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading today comes from the first chapter of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, 
Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This past Wednesday was my eighth anniversary of being consecrated a deaconess, and the Gospel reading today is a fitting scripture to mark the occasion. In my community of deacons and deaconesses, we learn about five images of diaconia. Diaconia is diaconal ministry. And in no particular order, here is just a brief overview of those five images. The table server. As Jesus shared the last meal and served his disciples, so we humble ourselves to serve others at the table. We acknowledge the need all people have for food to sustain life. We acknowledge the power of community that happens at the table. Examples of being a table server are setting the altar for the Eucharist, volunteering at a food pantry, providing a meal for someone who needs a reminder that they are loved. Another image is the gatekeeper. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. We consider how deacons can be gatekeepers. The gatekeeper welcomes the stranger into community, offers hospitality, and sees to the stranger's needs. They might also be called to protect those on the other side of the gate from harm and threat. Examples of being a gatekeeper are serving as an usher, offering shelter to those in need, guiding those who are lost into a safe community. Another image is the storyteller. Jesus was at times a beautiful storyteller, and at times he was a very frustrating storyteller. Some of his stories have obvious meanings, and others are vague and left to interpretation. We learn through stories. We grow through stories. We have been given a gift to share Jesus' story of life, crucifixion, and resurrection. Examples of being a storyteller are lectors during church service, teachers, authors, devotion writers, prayer writers, parents to their children. There are so many ways to live as a storyteller. Another image is light bearer. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we too can be light bearers. We too can bring light into darkness. This can be interpreted in, in so many ways, but here's what I will lift up. The counselor or therapist who helps someone struggling to find mental clarity. The friend or family who offers forgiveness to someone who is in a pit of guilt. The Habitat for Humanity volunteer who ensures a family in need has a roof over their head and electricity to light up their house at night. The last image I'll share with you is the foot washer. On Maundy Thursday, we are reminded of Jesus bending to his knees to wash his disciples' feet. He is the king and savior, and yet he is washing the feet of those who serve him. He reminds us that we are all equal 
in the eyes of God. There are always going to be power dynamics in our lives, but we are to treat all people as though they were Jesus. There's a saying that I don't know where it comes from, but it goes something like, I judge someone's character on how they treat the janitor, not the CEO. That is the foot washer. Examples of this. Helping a child tie their shoes. Staying after service to clean the worship space. Not just giving a homeless person $5, but talking to them like a human being. These are five images of diaconal ministry. I took a vow to live my life in this way, and it is hard. It is challenging, and it is uncomfortable. And I am not good at it sometimes. I make mistakes and make decisions that do not honor these images. But I am called to try, and so are you. There is a mandate threaded throughout all four Gospels that we hold above all else. We are to love the Lord our God, and we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. The Gospel lesson tells me that neighbors is not meant to mean the people who live to your left and to your right. We are to love all people. We are to clothe the poor, aid the sick, seek justice for those in need, and feed the hungry. We are about to enter the season of Advent, a time of preparation for that joyous Christmas day and season where we celebrate the birth of Christ. Each week is a time for reflection and prayer. The candles we will light represent hope, faith, joy, and prayer and peace. It is a time for family and a time for community. May we remember these images of diaconal ministry as we prepare ourselves for the Christmas season. May we remember that we are all called to live and serve as table servers, gatekeepers, light bearers, storytellers, and feet washers. May we ever expand our definition of neighbors and community, today and always. Thanks be to God. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb of on his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems groans, all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all the eternity. Crown him the virgin son, the God incarnate born, whose arm those crimson trophies won, which now his brow adorn. Fruit of the mystic rose, yet of that rose the stem, the root hence mercy ever flows, the babe of Bethlehem. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side. Rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. No angels in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bend their burning eyes at mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save.
Together as one body in Christ, and as we say the Apostles' Creed, we claim our faith and tell ourselves and the people around us that what we believe. I invite you to join me as we claim our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer petition will end with the words, Hear us, O God, and you are invited to respond with the words, Your mercy is great. God, we live in a world of plenty in which people struggle for daily bread. We pray for people who lack basic necessities of life and for people who willingly share the resources you have given. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, correct people who accumulate resources out of anxiety, misinformation, or selfishness. Open eyes to your presence among the poor of the world and free people for joyful giving. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted so that we might grow as disciples. God, replace what has been depleted, sustain our ministries, and deepen relationships with the wider community. Help us, the community of Norway Grove Memorial, to ask boldly for what is needed most. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Restore to health all people who have contracted COVID-19. Uphold families, friends, and all who support people with COVID-19. God, we pray for all people to receive necessary medical care. God, we pray for all workers who serve us and provide us. God, assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you admonish us to offer hospitality to the stranger and to welcome the weary. We pray for travelers, for all who emigrate to new lands, for refugees of political and religious wars, and for people who have no place to call home. Hear us, O oh God. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us. Restore our capacity to see your image in people whose dignity has been stripped away. Convict the conscience and open the heart of any who would raise walls of self-preservation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for friends and family of Norway Grove Memorial. We celebrate with people experiencing birthdays, anniversaries, moves to new homes. We pray for strength, comfort, and healing for people who grieve, experience pain, or illness. We pray for all the families and friends who gather this week in person or virtually. Today we name before you
and people and places we name silently in our hearts. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We continue our service with an invitation to the offering. The Lord made the heavens and all the earth belongs to God. As Jesus taught us, let us give to God the things that are God's own. If we were gathered together, now would be a time when we collect gifts and offerings. Thank you to people who mail in your gift and offering. Please continue to do so or give online by going to our website, norwaygrove.com. And now, let us lift our voices with an offering of song. and voices raise tell everyone what God has done let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name send us with your promises O God and lead us forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving hallelujah Let us pray together the word of thanks. Almighty God, all honor and majesty, strength and beauty are yours, maker of heaven and earth. Let these simple offerings we bring be a sign of the great glory that is due to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Receive the blessing. May God who seeks the lost keep you. May God who brings back the wandering heart uphold you. May God who binds up the injured heal you. May God who strength strengthens the weak empower you now and forever. Amen. With the eyes of your heart enlightened, Receive the hope to which God has called you in Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. <laughs> 